four inch. And because it has multiple feeds, in other words, it came from Third Street and Second Street, it, it, it's a major pipe uh, for gas. And, and since gas gas is uh, uh, you know compressed at 60 psi, just like water, but it's coming out under pressure, and it, it's it very loud. I don't know if you were here when, not. It was, when it was here. But it's extremely loud. You couldn't hear. You couldn't speak to anybody near near it within several hundred feet because it was so loud. It's like a freight train engine going at high rate of speed. It was extremely loud. Now, what we don't want to do is uh, shut down. If, if, if they shut down uh, one gas valve, then what that does is it just sends the pressure the other way, and that may cause additional damage, which creates a, a bigger hazard. So we have to make sure that, and again, this, they had to come out onto 3rd Street uh, to, to close the main. What they initially tried to do was shut off the supply line. You want to get as close to the building as can. So if there's a supply line going into this building and the gate box is here and the break is over there, they want to shut this right. off. They couldn't, and they can't, because a lot of times the the, the, the gate boxes have been buried, buried for such a long time. Street rumbling. Even here things. with new construction, I guess so. All right, whatever. But yeah. even just regular, uh, so yeah. that fills up. So they, and because it's so close to the explosive level, they can't use tools. It has to be done by hand, and it, so they can't get a truck in there that has a uh, uh, has a, a, a heat source yeah. and could be a non sparking. So yeah. so that what they did is they tried to do that first. By the gate valve, dig it out, tried to put in the, the key to unlock, uh, to shut it down. It didn't work. And then they said, okay, well, now we have to go to find the gate boxes that feeds the main. So I understand there were two, one at uh, second, the one third second, and one, one on Linsky? On Linsky. So they have to identify. They have to find them, take them out if they're covered. So it's because sometimes during uh, road work, they'll get paved over. And so they have to find them if they're not visible. And with all the construction that's going on, Sometimes that happens that somebody does a, a temporary patch and the gate box falls down before before the, the crew gets out there to do the patch. And when they do the patch, it's already uh, below the surface, street surface, and they cover it over. It happens all the time. So, but in this case, the one at Second Street was under temporary asphalt. There was a, it was off. It wasn't straight down, and it got moved over, so it, you couldn't put the thing in straight. So again, you have to dig down, you have to dig it all up. So and that takes time, because you can't just start digging, because you have to make sure there's no electrical wires in the way, that there's no water mains, and there's no other gas things. And, and so it, ha it has to be done by hand. Meaning shovels? Sometimes shovels, yeah. So it takes time. Okay. But, but the advantage, and this doesn't seem like it would be, but the advantage of the high pressure venting into the atmosphere is actually safer than if we had shut down partially the main. You know, if we try to shut it down and it was like only coming out a little, then it starts to go this way. Because, underground. Because No, uh, on the ground. Because, oh, the, oh, because the pressure forces it straight up in the air. At the point of the break, yeah. It, and it dis disperses that way. But if it's at the ground, then all of a sudden we have air intakes from all the buildings around it, which suck that in, because they're running. Yeah. So it's going to pull it into each of all the other buildings. So that's why it takes so long, because you want to get it right. You only have, want to have one accident, and that was the break. You don't want to have any fires in any of the buildings, and you don't want to jeopardize anybody with life. So that, we, we, want, we want people to know. And the other thing you may want to put in there, and I had spoken to the building operators, or the representatives over there, is that when there's a gas odor, a gas leak, somebody smells gas, do not use telephones. I'm talking telephones, not cell phones. But no telephones in the building. Don't set off the fire alarm. And don't turn on any, on any turn on or off any electrical devices. Do not use the elevators because each one of those will, can create a spark. And until the fire department comes in and determines that it's safe to do so, there's always the potential for an explosion. It happens around the country, but it sounds it, it happens in New York all the time. Buildings blow up, and the you know, fire department responds, and this, half the building is in the street because somebody. Did something like that. It sounds like people did activate did, the fire right. pull stations. And that's the, I have spoken to them, and, and again, they probably think that's that's a good thing to do, but it's not. 
if for any other reason, an active shooter, uh, of a smoke, a fire, or whatever, or, or, or a building collapse, or whatever, you know, whatever, just to get people out. Yes. Gas emergencies is the only time you don't want to do anything with electricity to create a spark at any source. Do these buildings have a mechanism to evacuate the building without the fire system? No. So, I mean, internal notifications. Well, again, but, but, well, everybody has cell phones now. But and, there's and, not and, a mechanism to activate the building speakers, or maybe those would be a problem, too. Yeah, we wouldn't want to use anything. Again, it's got to be done. It's got to be done individual by person. It's got to be the security. Send, you know, sending so that's why we don't see any strobes flashing because you guys would have shut those systems down. We, we've shut everything down that was uh, activated. Yeah. And the decision was also made not to shut off electrical power. Don't shut anything off because exactly because you could. Yeah. All right. So it, if it's done, so it has to be done remotely from the scene, which means with electricity. And I told you that electricity flows in one direction, which means you have to. Sometimes shut off more than one place. More than one yeah. place because you're going to have back feeding. Because the system, did you ever lose power for like a few yeah, no, seconds I, and it comes back? I'm on? an electrical engineer. I have some background. So that's in it, why yeah. it happens is because the system is already set up to back feed everything yeah. and leave that one line break in place. But so we don't want that to happen. And you don't want to blow up a transformer. Well, we can do that. Well, I mean, but <laughs> I just nothing near the gas. I'm sorry, you are uh, Deputy Chief Frank Murphy. Frank Murphy, thank you.